Oregon State and Oregon is still a very competitive rivalry, one that doesn't have the biggest implications, but Oregon State is looking to play the role of spoiler for Oregon's Pac-12 championship hopes as well as the college football playoff hopes. The Beavers had a tough loss to Washington in the pouring rain last week, but they are still motivated as ever to beat Oregon. This is not a... a any other game for them, they know exactly what's at stake. They know what they need to do, and it's going to be an absolute battle. When you look at the history of this rivalry, it's been fun. The last few matchups have been close, and that's something we should expect this year as well. But I think that there's a lot of things that Oregon does that Oregon State must step up step up and prevent. And really the first thing is keeping DJ Uyangale upright and healthy. I think that his impact on this game comes in many forms his ability to run the football and his ability to throw giving him time to throw against this Oregon defense that is much better than I think a lot of people expected I think that they stepped up in a big way and it's been a big reason why Oregon's had so much success this is also an Oregon team on a mission so if you're Oregon State you have to find a way to bounce back from your second loss in four games a tough loss to a Washington team that's really good and beat another top 10 team in the Oregon Ducks Damian Martinez, absolute stud. I think he's one of the better running backs that we're not talking about. He's a physical runner, and he has done a great job of studying this offense. It's been more of a balanced approach, which has been fun to watch, and a win over Oregon would be a great way to end the regular season. Now, when you're facing an Oregon team, there's so many weapons you have to slow down. There's so many guys that when you look at this roster, it's tough to pick out one that you need to slow down more than the other because that's how talented and deep they are. Bo Nix is having a Heisman-worthy season, but around him is really the, the best part about him, about this team. And Bo Nix obviously gets a lot of credit, and he's playing really well. It's not to take anything away from him. But when you look at this team, they're stacked. The offensive line is just as good as it was last year. I think that they have been phenomenal. They are physical. They send messages. They get down a field in a hurry they i mean look at the last game they had a number of plays where they are running 50 yards downfield and making plays that's how dedicated they are that's how much it means to them and that's a big reason why they've been successful you look at what the skill positions provide to jordan james and bucky irving who are the better running backs in college football that tandem is one of the best in the country you look at the wide receivers tez johnson is a speedster that can be a absolute problem terrence ferguson at tight end even Patrick Herbert showed up in a big way. But Troy Franklin is really the one that is the biggest problem. He has been phenomenal for Oregon all year. He has been Bo Nix's favorite target, and he has been a big reason why they've had so much success. But on the defensive side of the ball, there are a number of players that have stepped up in a big way, and transfers are, are some of the bigger names that we'll talk about. Evan Williams coming from Fresno State was one of the bigger additions, and he has played great at safety. I, I'm Watched him at Fresno State. He did great things there, and he's made the transition to the Power 5 level almost seamlessly. Another transfer is Jordan Birch, the South Carolina defensive end, came into Oregon and made an impact right away. He's been an absolute force at times, and he's been really fun to watch. Those are guys that will be a problem for Oregon State. The thing with Oregon State is that they're that underdog that is so tough to beat because they play with such a tough mentality. They are... And they embody the underdog role. And Jonathan Smith is kind of an underdog himself. And that's what makes them so tough. And you look at even last year, I think a lot of people expect Oregon to win that game last year. And Oregon State comes out with a four-point win. That is very much a possibility in this game. Obviously, Oregon is playing better than Oregon State is right now. But there is still the possibility of an upset. And you can bet that Dan Lanning is reminding them that this is a serious game. And they know what's at stake. There's a playoff on, on the line. There's a Pac-12 championship on the line there's a lot for oregon to lose here oregon state has nothing to lose they are playing purely for pride and to add another win in the win call they are looking for uh, essentially to add to bragging rights they already have the win from last year and they are looking to add another one this is a team that you have to take serious because you look at even the wide receivers look at the wide receivers silas bold and anthony gold are not big by any means but they will torch you if you do not pay attention, if you are not careful. And now Oregon's secondary is very talented, but that does not make them immune to big plays. They can give up big plays and they can get hurt if they're not careful. And that's why they, they know they're going to take this game serious. The quarterback play 
is really fun too because DJ played better than I think he did at Clemson at times, but also I think we've seen a lot of Clemson DJ too. So if he plays better than what we've seen, especially after last week, and part of that was the weather, but if you play see him play better, then I think Oregon State's in good hands. I think that they have a chance to win. Be physical. This offensive line for Oregon State is going to give Oregon's defensive line a lot of trouble. But if DJ can get involved in both facets of the game, I really like what Oregon State can do to keep things close. Bonix is having, like I said, a Heisman-worthy year. Over 1,200 yards with 14 touchdowns in just his last three games. He is absolutely dominating right now. And like I said, Oregon is on a mission. Now, when it comes to picking this game, I'm picking Oregon. Oregon is just, they know what's at stake. They are, are really using that loss to Washington as a motivating factor, and it has worked so far. They have been lights out for the most part. They have made statements against a number of good teams, especially you look at what they did against Arizona State last week, which is not, a, I should say, that's, that's not a good team, but that was a statement. They essentially went up by big in the first half, Posted to a win the week before that statement against USC two weeks before that statement against Utah. All they have done since that loss is remind everyone that they are on a mission to get back and they are definitely a national championship contender.